it's not okay that I can go to work tomorrow and be fired for being a gay man. It's not okay that I can be denied housing for being a gay man. It's not okay that I can be asked to leave a restaurant for being a gay man. But in the state of Kentucky right now, the way law is written, that's perfectly acceptable, except it's not acceptable. I mean, there's tons of people out there like me. We're not, you know, we're not just like hidden all over the place and there's not little amounts of us. There's a lot of us. There's a lot of trans people and gay people and anybody else that's part of the LGBT out there. And with the fairness ordinance, it kind of makes people be able to like treat us with a basic human de uh, decency on a daily basis instead of just discriminating all the time. It also helps people like me um, that get discriminated against in the workplace be able to find a job and actually support their family. Well, the Fairness Campaign was started, I believe, around 96 uh, with a headquarters located in Louisville. And their goal was to go around city by city to get ordinances passes, non-discrimination ordinances, extending protections based on, for those based on gender identity and sexual orientation. About 15 of these have passed so far. Owensboro, however, is looking to be the first one to pass countywide. I think the name of it itself is, is uh, uh, an indicator. It, it's about fairness. It, it's about treating everybody the same. Um, nobody's asking for special treatment. Uh, it, they're asking for fairness. They're asking to be treated uh, equally. Um, and the laws do not now protect people from discrimination, uh, from ridicule. Fairness is really all about just being fair. It extends the same protections to those that we already have based on race, religion, sex, uh, age, between 40 and 70. It literally just puts them all under the same protections for employment, housing, and public accommodations. Because as of right now, it's still legal for someone to go, oh, I'm just gonna refuse service to you because you're gay, or I'm not gonna hire you because you're trans. In June of this year, uh, there were back-to-back -back articles, one in Owensboro Times and one in Messenger Inquirer, about the idea of a fairness or non-discrimination ordinance in Owensboro Davis County. And almost unanimously, every city or county official interviewed for those articles said that we don't have an issue with that type of discrimination locally. And I thought about it for a second. I thought, well, they clearly haven't talked to the right people. And so on June 30th, the last day of Pride Month, uh, my husband Kevin and I, we decided that we would share our own stories um, and the stories of folks that we know. And so we compiled a social media post that was about this long. <laughs> and uh, we hit publish and I closed the laptop. We walked out of the house to go do some landscaping and came back a couple hours later. And uh, it had spread like wildfire because uh, people couldn't believe that what they thought was not happening in Owensboro Davis County was happening. I'm, uh, I'm Chad Benefield, even though I think I pretty much know everybody in this room. If I don't, hey, I'm Chad. So um, earlier today, I was actually with some of you at the Rooster Booster breakfast. Um, and that breakfast opened with an invocation from Vicki Quisenberry from Foundation for Davis County Public Schools. And um, there was a section of that prayer that I found particularly important and poignant. She said, we thank you for exposing us to diversity of ethnicity, uh, religious beliefs and political views, and we pray for tolerance and cooperation that makes all feel welcome and encouraged to thrive here. So when we first decided to get a place together, we looked at an apartment that we loved. Uh, went to see it, my parents went to see it with us, uh, and left that day thinking the next day we were going to sign the lease papers and put down the deposit at first month's rent and be able to move in together. Um, we were told by the leasing agent that day that they were not going to be able to rent to us. And the reason why is because um, they didn't want to rent to two college guys. It didn't really occur to us in the moment, uh, what really happened. Uh, but a few days later, we were thinking about it, and I was like, wait a minute. I think I know why they didn't rent the apartment to us. I think they didn't rent to us because we're a gay couple. And we actually talked about, briefly, 
um, doing something about it because in, in that moment of not renting to us because we were guys, I mean, that, that person basically violated civil rights law because you can't discriminate based on gender, right? Um, but after talking it over, we realized that we wouldn't have a leg to stand on because if we had sued them for gender discrimination, all they had to do in court was admit the truth and that they didn't rent to us because we were gay and that's perfectly acceptable uh, under state law. I had a, a letter, I brought two letters out as a matter of fact, and one of them was from a, a gentleman and every one of you up here know this, this man. And he said, as a father of a gay married man, I wish we lived in a world where such discussions were unnecessary. Isn't that, in the 21st century, and I think most discussions with our younger people, it's not necessary because there's a very many young people here today. To say we don't need a law is the same as saying we don't need equal employment opportunity laws or civil rights laws. And that's what the gay community is asking. Uh, but finally he says, my son would never consider making his home back here in Davis County for many reasons, but one of those is this issue. We want our kids to come back here after college, if we want them. Then we need to show them that we care about everyone, and let's not leave anyone behind. The recent proposal of a fairness ordinance for Davis County has created much concern among Christians, religious leaders, and business owners in the county. Our desire is not to unnecessarily offend nor instruct others how to behave in their private lives. In an effort to follow Christ, we aim to love our neighbors, even those with whom we deeply disagree. Oppression, hate, and divisiveness should be avoided by all parties in this discussion. However, in light of the proposed ordinance, we would suggest that for the following reasons, this ordinance is unnecessary and subversive to the principles of liberty and could potentially contribute to promote conflicts and division in our community. A fairness ordinance is a non-discrimination ordinance protecting the LGBTQ community from discrimination. I've been discriminated against and I didn't have a voice. Right now, there are no federal or state laws protecting this kind of discrimination, but the LGBTQ community in Owensboro says their rights need to be protected. I think it's a misunderstanding of what the scriptures teach. Um, Jesus treated everybody equally, uh, everybody fairly. Uh, I don't see any way of, if, if God is love, if, if Jesus is uh, uh, the, the human manifestation of, of God on earth, um, then, and we follow his example, I don't see anywhere where Jesus would have, for instance, refused to bake a cake for somebody because of who they were. Ask yourself what it really is. Don't hide behind religion. If you can honestly tell yourself that Christ would turn away anybody because of their sexual orientation or who they love, you clearly are not that much into your faith. So, I mean, be honest with yourself. Why, why does this make you uncomfortable? Why do you feel like you need to discriminate against these people? I mean, why do you feel like they don't deserve the same love and respect as your own family does. So Kentucky is one of 30 states nationwide that does not have protections in place for the LGBTQ community. And that's why a variety of cities and communities in the Commonwealth have been passing those on a local basis because we need them. I mean, you know, it's, it's not okay that I can go to work tomorrow and be fired for being a gay man. It's not okay that I can be denied housing for being a gay man. It's not okay that I can be asked to leave a restaurant for being a gay man. But in the state of Kentucky right now, the way law is written, that's perfectly acceptable, except it's not acceptable. On one side, there's a group that I will refer to as the religious conservative. They are convinced that if this law is passed, their religious liberties and freedom of conscience will be eroded. They believe that this is a slippery slope and it causes them much concern. On the other side, the LGBTQ plus community wants the fairness ordinance to pass so as to forward their agenda. They would like everyone in the community to affirm that the LGB community and their lifestyle is accepted here in Davis County. To me, the most important thing is how are the members of the LGBT community actually being treated? I believe they're being treated well. I found this building that I liked, and of course I called and I gave them the spiel, you know, I've been in business five years, whatever, and they were like, oh yeah, we'd, we'd love to talk to you about it. So I go into the office, for, and um, 
When I go into the office, the, the leasing agent comes out, takes one look at me and, and laughed and said, oh no, we don't rent people like you in front of his entire office. Now, <clears throat> I can't, I don't know if a whole lot of people know how humiliating that is. You know, I mean, cause in my mind I thought, who am I? Like people like me, I'm a mother and I'm a business owner and I've been in business for, you know, five years. I say the first five years are the worst and I've already made it through that. And I'm a, you know, I'm a t-ball coach at the time. Like, what do you mean who I am? You know what I mean? During this time when I came out, it was kind of hard to find a job to begin with just because there wasn't that many jobs available at the time. And whenever I did get a job, I got fired within three weeks due to discrimination, but they couldn't outright say it. It started with um, going to a local establishment one night, listen to some music, hang out, have a few drinks. Uh, one of my friends worked at this establishment, so I didn't feel like it was a big deal. Um, I didn't have anything other than mascara and eyeliner on, um, nothing crazy. Um, and though it wasn't brought to my attention while I was there, it was when I left where a bunch of stuff started to happen, uh, where the owner of the establishment blasted me on Facebook um, using my image. Um, I was told that my band was never gonna be allowed to play there. Um, and that really set a fire in me because of the fact that if I'm getting treated like that over mascara and eyeliner, what are all these other people being treated like? <laughs> they just go in there to have a drink that are definitely at that time doing way more than I was doing. And we've had so many people reach out to us and share very similar stories with regards to real estate, uh, with regards to employment. Um, some, believe it or not, instances of like where people were in restaurants and were treated differently or refused service by people. So um, that dynamics happen. Um, also, what's been really interesting is I've had people tell me or I know of people who have been cautious about getting involved in this push for a non-discrimination ordinance because they're afraid to do it because of perceived re uh, repercussions. I've had a fr another good friend of mine was basically warned, said, you should not get involved with this, it's going to affect your business. And what's interesting to me about that is, so if we didn't have an issue with discrimination, then why are those dynamics even at play? My closest friends are attorneys and sales managers and, and psychologists and people who have really honed in their craft. Um, and most of them don't live here. Um, one, there's just not the opportunity that bigger cities have. And I think that goes into recruitment. That goes into, do these big industries want to invest in Owensboro, Kentucky? Well, fairness ordinance goes into that. If you see that a community is not willing to invest in its citizens, why would you want to invest in that community? Business owners look at the facts of the ordinance, especially the one that Davis County is looking at passing that is very business friendly and very um, protective of the rights of the business, especially small businesses. I think a lot of people don't really understand the protection that's there and there's been a lot of fear mongering and a lot of uh, misinformation to them. I would have to say that that's the reason that a, a fellow business owner would be reluctant, is that they don't really, um, they haven't really looked at the ordinance and how it does protect our local businesses. And um, that I also know that they, if they're a small business in Davis County, they have a heart for the community or they wouldn't struggle to keep a business open in the community. Uh, the ordinance itself uh, states that they will have those rights to refuse based on their religious beliefs. It also cites the Kentucky Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which implies that a government cannot put a burden on someone based on a firmly held belief. So a baker does not have to bake for a gay wedding if they don't want to. A t-shirt company that's Christian based does not have to make a t-shirt for a pride event. Uh, what they can't do, however, is just not make a birthday cake to someone because they're gay. It's scary as a business owner to take a stand on different issues, but I felt like this was a very important stand we needed to take to be 
accepting, you know, if people hadn't stood up for persons of a color, if persons hadn't stood up for women, it's the same thing. We need to be fair to all. Recently, we've heard that other businesses in our industry are not um, friendly to those communities and they are kind of discriminatory to it and we want them to know that they have an ally here um, not only because um, it's the right thing to do but you know times have changed everybody has different views in their life and different beliefs you know I am a Christian um, I am conservative to some extent but at the same time, I also believe that you need to love your neighbor, no matter what their situation is. With all those in this room who support a non-discrimination ordinance, please stand. And I'm told that there are 180 people standing in the hallways in our business, um, we do a lot of hospice care, and a lot of times people don't need durable medical equipment until after a catastrophic event. I mean, you're not planning on needing a wheelchair in your home or not being able to get up out of your bed safely until you are. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like those of us who are gonna be a voice for those people should be a voice for everyone else. And to go right along with the fairness ordinance, those that are publicly opposed to it, if they walked in the door, we would treat them exactly the same way. And that's what the whole thing's about. individuals, anybody, um, but especially youth, I think as they're growing up and figuring out you know, who they are and what their identities are and trying to be comfortable with that, they're struggling already with internal acceptance, which is hard enough. And I think when you add external or social um, questioning by others or lack of acceptance by others, combined with you know a teenagers or youths already like intrinsic um, insecurity I think that is the perfect storm when you don't feel like you accept yourself or you're confused about yourself um, in relation to what society expects and then society sort of turns on you or doesn't accept you or says that you're not legitimate why would a kiddo feel safe um, in lots of different places and it makes sense to me that that might lead to suicide. Not having a fairness ordinance tells other people, straight, gay, otherwise, that they don't belong here. That they're not going to be safe here. Their jobs are not going to be safe here. Their mindsets, their families, their children are not going to be safe here. They can't grow here. Their businesses, nothing. We all need our basic needs, which is shelter, food, employment to keep those things, and safety. And if we don't have our basic needs met, it's very difficult to deal with any trauma, to deal with any mental health needs that you have because you don't have those basic needs met. So if you're being discriminated against because you can't get certain needs, then what do you do after that? I mean, you don't have your basic needs to live a successful, happy life. Yeah, it can cause a lot of mental health issues, I think, too. The number one killer of LGBTQ youth is suicide. Growing up as a, uh, as a kid and then as a teenager who was gifted and who was bright and who ended up in a seven year depression because I didn't know that the reality of it is, is I'm not somebody who's gonna go to hell because I'm gay. It's a fragment of who I am. The reality of it is, is I have all of these other skills and all of these other things that I can accomplish. Love people, want to help people. And that was all stifled because of what I was told until I left the city. 
left this area and left these strongholds. We have several cities and counties uh, in the state who, who have taken that step, who, who have realized that it's in their own best interest uh, to be open uh, to everyone and fair to everyone. Um, why wouldn't Winsboro want to be one of those? It, it's just the right thing to do. And it, I think it would help us economically, uh, but it also is just the right thing to do. It, it's, it's not just about economics. I was speaking recently at a, at a, a gay straight alliance at a local university and uh, two students that day um, mentioned to me that they're about to graduate and both of them said I cannot wait to graduate so I can get out of here and when they said that I thought okay so shame on us for a couple of reasons one because shame on us just in the way that those young people feel like they're being treated here, that they feel like they have to leave here to be themselves. I mean, that's not a good look for us. But also, I mean, we lose in a situation like that where we have young talent who we should be embracing instead of driving away from here. I think it's just a huge loss. You know, I think Owensboro's done a really good job of investing in downtown and investing in making it more of a tourist attraction, but there's still that old mindset that no, we don't need fairness ordinance when we do. And I hate that. I feel like it's a tarnish on this great community that raised me and loved me and all these wonderful people that I'm just crazy about are here. But how do you get young people to come back to a town that's stuck in an older mindset? And how do you get them to believe that we're gonna change when you hear commissioners say the things that they say that don't back that? As I have stated, I do not believe that you can legislate fairness. And I do believe that when you pass a new law, there are always unintended consequences. Honestly, I'm not sure myself what the definition of an LGBTQ community really is. It seems to be very fluid. It seems like the way you get in is to clear yourself in. I firmly believe that we need to end this discussion and put it to rest so that our citizens can move on. To do anything else would not be prudent. It would just prolong the inevitable and to continue to give people false impression and false hope that if we just keep talking about it and massaging the words, somehow it'll pass. It's easy to say when you're in a position of power and privilege and in, you are in the majority, it's easy to sit and sort of say, well, nothing there's no discrimination here because it doesn't affect me. That would be the first thing I think that I would say is to introduce the idea of what privilege is, whether it's white privilege um, that's race-based or whether it's gender privilege or whether it's sexual orientation privilege. When you're in the majority, you don't ever have to think about things like that. You don't feel comfortable here. Um, and if you want to, you know, and I, I, th I think it's really strange, you know, you, you build all this stuff downtown, you want a nightlife. Well, what do you want with, I mean, a nightlife if you don't want to keep your young people around? And young people don't want to stay in a community that's not open-minded because they, they have grown up open-minded. They don't understand this. They don't understand this kind of thinking. So why would they want to stay here? I certainly didn't want to stay here in the late 90s. And, you know, and the only reason that I came here is honestly the only reason that any of us come back here, and that's because our parents are here. So we don't want to be in a bubble in Davis County. We are a world community now, more than ever. And I think um, it, it's, it's a generational growth thing, and I think we'll see that. I, so we definitely want our youth to come back. But one of the things that I've really seen is the ones who've come back, come back because this is a family-friendly town. This is a great place to raise children. And they understand that in order to do that the best way, we need that diversity and that unbiased equality among everyone, not, not just a select few. So for one, it makes us feel like that we are noticed and that we are officially like a part of the community and that we have these protections. Another side benefit to this is economically. 
uh, a lot of Fortune 1000 companies look at HRC scores, which is the Human Rights Campaign, to determine what city they wish to plant their business at. Owensboro is sitting at an 18 this year. I think my favorite slogan that I've heard recently is y'all means all. So, you know, uh, here in Kentucky, you know, Owensboro, we're all about Southern hospitality. And um, sometimes, you know, members of the LGBTQ community, we get left out of that. Um, so I want Owensboro to be a place that, you know, my kids want to stay and that other people want to come. Knowing from a young age that you are accepted and wanted in your community, I think we would see a huge increase um, in overall mental health for our LGBTQ youth and for individuals staying here. I was shuddered a link to think of one of my kids leaving because they didn't feel like they were supported by the entire community. You know, I'm, I'm a great support. My husband is a great support system. Their siblings are a great support system, but it has to go beyond that. It has to be the entire community as a, as a whole. You know, no one should be discriminated against because of their sexual preference. I think the community would be better for it. I do. Just acceptance. It's time to accept everybody, not everybody but. <laughs> I would want my town to be better. That's, that's, that's why I'm here, that's why I'm doing this, is I wanna to say to my leaders and to everybody out there, I want, I want Owensboro to be better, because I mean, it is a beautiful town on the outside. We have you know, a great riverfront, and I think we have a lot of great people here, and I just, I just want that to be, in, to be shown through this ordinance, and I think that's a big step to saying, hey, we're Owensboro, we're beautiful, and we love you. If you want to help get a non-discrimination ordinance passed here in Owensboro, the key thing is to write letters. Write letters to the county commissioners and to the executive judge. Write letters to our mayor and our city commissioners in case we decide to take it to them. When we do plan on going to present it, please come out and support it. Show that you are there. Wear the same color shirts. I know people have been making t-shirts as well. Feel free to order those. But above all else, write those letters. The most like heartwarming part about this entire experience, and I've got to be honest, I mean, it's since June 30th, it's been a little bit of a ride uh, because I, I knew that by publishing that post that we were going to wake people up uh, to some of the dynamics in play here. But overwhelmingly, what's happened is um, the people who've taken notice um, and have read these stories and heard these experiences and truly listened to them, the majority of those people, the overwhelming majority, have said, you know what, this, this is not okay that this happens here. And so the idea that we have this non-discrimination ordinance and people are working to get this passed and uh, there's so much momentum behind it. And it's not just from the LGBTQ community, it's from uh, the straight community, it's from a lot of people in the religious community who are gathering behind this movement and standing behind it in support. I mean, that's just huge. And I think that the message here, the takeaway is going to be, and if it, if it doesn't happen, this month or next month, the ultimate takeaway is this is going to pass um, and Owensboro Davis County is going to seem like a place for everyone. Um, it's going to seem, <laughs> what is it the sticker says, y'all means all. Um, y'all means all. And it's going to mean that in Owensboro Davis County. Take a look at where you've been and how you've come so far No matter where you find yourself, you're always where you are Go anywhere you go, do anything you do, I'll be with you Take a moment, take an hour, take another year Start again, I'll keep going, I'll always be right here Feel anything you feel, hear anything you hear, you'll never disappear. When it feels like you're walking back, 
when you're out of luck and off the path Broken and far from home Just remember that you're not alone Try not to dig too deep, afraid of what you'll find Give yourself the grace you show me all the time Cause when you love yourself, you can give that love to someone else Mornings come and seasons go and life can get so hard It's easy to forget the things that make you who you are I hope that when you look at you, you see yourself the way that I do When it feels like you're walking back When you're out of luck and off the path Broken and far from home Just remember that you're not alone Not alone.